and welcome to the next episode of Sonic Touch that is now obviously named. Uh, first of all, I want to say thanks to Synthlab for the title. <laughs> I misread the comments. My humblest apologies. I'm very sorry. He was very big about it, in fact, and it was all settled amicably, like gentlemen. <laughs> Anyway, um, so this week uh, we're basically going to look at another couple of applications. This is my co-host Gaz Williams. So what have you been doing, Gaz? Have you had any iPad-related uh, events this week? Well, I was in a rehearsal yesterday for uh, an Ennio Morricone project, playing the music of Ennio Morricone with like a, uh, an orchestra of sorts, with so a string section, brass section, and uh, some guitars, and, and, a, and a choir as well. And, and I'm going to play um, some of the synth parts on iPad. Oh, uh, but that raised a few eyebrows in the rehearsals. Well, the bass player wasn't there, so I ended up on playing bass instead, so, uh, which is my first instrument. But um, yeah, so I didn't get, actually get to play the iPad. Ah. But... It did come in useful because uh, they were handing out sheet music and they were a few copies short. So um, I was actually just taking photos of it with the iPad and then displaying it on my on my screen. Uh, so and uh, here is a picture of the <laughs> yeah. notation there. Obviously, yeah. it would normally be in uh, landscape in mm. portrait mode for that, but uh, so that and that worked out fine. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And I mean, I guess it's just another example of like this kind of device is very kind of musician friendly. When you've got them with you in things like rehearsals, they you know they they are quite useful. And anyway, you don't need us to justify why you should get an iPad. <laughs> That's entirely your own personal choice. But if you do have one, uh, there are a couple of really quite big uh, news announcements and apps this week we're hoping to take a look at. The first is the announcement that Lima has been uh, brought to the iPad. Now, Lima is essentially, uh, it was a touch platform, uh, touch screen platform. That originally, it was a piece of hardware, multi-touch by somebody called uh, Jazz Mutant. Jazz Mutant has now been gone by the wayside. And the people at Line, L-I-I-N-E, have ported Lima over to iPad. So let's take a look and see what it can do. So here it is on the iPad. Um, Jazzmutin gave us a couple of codes, which I must say I'm quite pleased about because uh, the app itself is actually quite expensive in terms of uh, iPad apps. Uh, what well, it's 35 UK pounds, 49 US dollars. It's not the cheapest of things. Well, mind you, though, it is. Uh an awful lot cheaper than the, the Lima was just only a few years ago. Well, that's true. The Lima itself, uh, because it was a dedicated hardware device, was about two thousand euros. Right. And I think at the time, with the exchange rates, it was it was in the region of three thousand dollars. I mean, it's really expensive, okay. but it made it very difficult for people to mm. access. Although, to be fair, mm. uh, people like Bjork, mm. uh, Daft Punk uh, use them in the studio and live, mm. and they're still being used. I mean, they did find a very much need. They're so it's such a flexible control device. Mm -hmm. But let's take a look at how that works. What I'll do is I'll switch over to my uh, Lima editor on the uh, Mac that I'm running here. Okay, so here I am on the line.net uh, website. You can download a Lima editor for the OS X and for Windows, uh, both of them installable. Now, I've already done that, so I'm just gonna switch to my um, Lima editor here. And I've got a blank template. Uh, it allows me to kind of, I can open up various different uh, types of interface elements, so you can see them all up here, drag them onto the stage. I won't go into that now. Uh, I will open something I've already taken, which was basically an amalgamation of a number of different control type things. Uh, so I've got a keyboard here, I've got a Ableton Live clip launcher, I've got a funny, funky kind of bouncing breakpoint interface thing, and I've got a step sequencer. So the first thing I need to do is connect to the Lima. Uh, here it is, it shows up a wirelessly. We're both connected to the same wireless network. So if I just connect there and press sync, and now I switch to the iPad, you can see that the interface has come up uh, and I've got my clips, my uh, bouncy thing, and my um, step sequencer and the keyboard. So now if I just switch to Ableton Live, you'll be able to see what's going on. Here I am at Live and I'll just throw the iPad up here as well. I'm gonna launch a clip or scene, these are scene buttons, various buttons here. So if I now go to my um, bouncy ball thing, I'm gonna set that running. If I get rid of uh, that shot, you can see what that's doing, it's modulating a filter that I've got across the entire mix. Because one of the big selling points of Lima was the physics engine, wasn't it? That sort of you could uh, apply physics properties to controllers for modulating parameters. Yeah, I mean, there are some really great objects, I and mean, I've just taken a selection here, but there's a whole library of them and lots of templates. I mean, uh, this is just, for instance, just one of them. If I go now to another one, which is uh, quite cool, which is the step sequencer, I'll start that off. And I've, got, I've made my own little button here. It says effects bypass. <laughs> so if I go to it, uh, first of all, I need to go to a clip where it's actually playing, which I think is that one. So now I'm going to my sub 
Now this sequencer is now playing the, the filter cutoff. If I go back to here uh, and select the right instrument, that is a Simplant synth and it's now just modulating the uh, cutoff frequency there and I can bypass it here with my little button. And likewise, if I want, I can start playing some keys in there. I mean, to be honest, I found it actually really quite quite fun to use and quite, uh, it, you know, it's, it's basically like the original Lima. The original Lima kind of did end up being used by some big names and was, uh, because it was the first thing that was available. Mm. So now, certainly the live integration works incredibly well. Mm. I did find that I had slightly less success with Logic. Uh, there aren't so many templates or things that are dedicated. There is a, a Logic control or a Mackie mm -hmm. control emulator, but it's more geared towards live. It doesn't really work in mm -hmm. the Logic. So we're still suffering from a, a slight lack of templates, but there is a very willing and able community who are kind of up for this. Mm. I mean, really though, I mean, you've got to be prepared to be quite scientific. I'm kind yes. of thinking in terms of people who maybe like to make their own reactor templates, that sort of thing. If you mm. want to go straight out of the box mm. and have this running, in your system, uh, you'll you probably want to look elsewhere. That's not That's really right. the, the kind of one for that. Yeah, it really is the. It is really about the customization, isn't it? It's really about being able to sort of think. I would like to make a controller that could do this and this and this, and therefore it gives you a whole load of objects which could do different things, and then you could effectively build your own kind of control surface. Uh, and you can, because all the knobs and faders and the different things are all resizable, so you can sort of customize it exactly to what you want. You do have to be prepared to get in because it will communicate with MIDI and it also does OSC as well. So there's mm. a lot of levels, particularly when you're talking with Max for Live, which has built in OSC support. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of stuff that you can do there. Uh, OSC, Open Sound Control, which almost is a could be a replacement for MIDI once it gets more widely uh, mm. adopted. But overall, uh, I, I'm, I, I kind of spent quite a number of hours on this, mm. just because, and not, not because I was frustrated, but because I quite enjoyed the process, yeah. and I kind of wanted to, oh, <laughs> can I get it to do that? Can I get it to do this? Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing I would say is when you're building your own templates, you're probably in more control. If you load a template already in, I mean, the one thing I found, I load a template in, I go, yeah, I just want to map that control to here, and it was like, wait, wait a minute. Where's that MIDI control eight coming from? Or where's this note coming from? Because I just didn't know where it was. And that's yeah. because I hadn't built it myself. Yeah. I mean, um, after within minutes of, down, of downloading it, I had built, uh, built like an Ableton Live controller uh, that I'd built from the ground up. And the actual process of building it is actually, it's quite straightforward. You know, yeah. I didn't actually have to look at the manual for, for that. And so lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheap. It's an expensive option, but it's actually very, very powerful. I mean, I think yes. that there's probably Touch OSC has a similar kind of vibe to it. I mean, you and it's cheaper, mm. uh, but you can't, you don't get the same level of the, the heritage of the beautiful physics objects and the, the mass programming is yeah. more is more available in the Lima editor than it is perhaps. In I think Touch it's been OSC. ten years in development, hasn't it, Lima? It's sort of um, so has, it does have that kind of heritage on its side. Uh, but it is, a, it is really is a very professional piece of software, really. Yeah. So one to watch out for, and um, perhaps if you're putting together a show that needs very specific control or in the studio, then definitely worth a look. So we've got another great app for you to look at this week, and that's something that Gaz has been taking a look at. So what exactly are we looking at now? And we're going to look at Nano Studio, which was one of the first really great audio apps available for the iPhone, which has now come out in a native iPad version. It was always um, it was like a music production environment, like Reason. You couldn't record into it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a MIDI. It's a MIDI studio. So uh, you've got like a you've got like um, a synthesizer, and you've got like a kind of drum pad type thing. Um, but you can bring samples into it too. So it does have like some MPC type functionality as well. I, I actually I remember downloading the first thing, and it caused a real stir uh, because. It was so kind of like, wow, you can do this on a phone, on an iPad. It was really, mm. really impressive. Yes. Actually. It was the first big iPad apps that I remember really kind of thinking, wow. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's satisfying because it is a self-contained production suite. So, you know, it really is, it really has got everything in it, uh, you know, that, that you'd expect maybe from a DAW sort of... Uh, uh, rather than, you know, it's not like a cut down thing mm. at all. Really. And I'm just really well programmed for mm. the touch environment. So let's have a look. Okay, so let's uh, let's load it up on my iPad. 
version 1.3. Um, okay, uh, so we've got like a page here where I can load projects in and um, so let's just bring something in I did last night. And we can see that um, this is like the synthesizer interface here and uh, we've got like touch pads which can also be set to be in using the accelerometer for sort of oh, actually adjusting. you've got more additional yeah. control right uh, and then as we step through these various pages we can see it's, it goes pretty in depth really um and there's a full modulation matrix here so plenty of uh plenty of of depth to the synthesizer engine and it does sound good doesn't it yeah and the yeah. other thing i remember about it was the just great effects really sort of deep and wide it sort of sounded very lush sounds good it does sound good so there's two kind of instruments that you could choose this is called eden which is like this polyphonic synthesizer but that's not just an analog synthesizer analog model of synthesizer it's actually it can be a sample it can be a, a, a sampler as well so you could just record your own samples directly into it or you could import samples uh so you know very deep in itself. And then the other, the other one is the uh, TRG, uh, trigger I guess it's short for, and that's more like a, well it's like drum pads, but, it, but to be honest, it's more like an Akai MPC type. Uh, yeah, well you can see they've gone for the look there, definitely. Yes, yeah. And playing around with it yesterday, I loaded in samples which were like a minute long and, uh, you know, and for instance, if we were to go into the edit mode there and we looked at the sample and we went into the edit mode, there's like a fully featured sample editor in here, and uh, you know, and it's nice. It's nice. Look, very responsive. It's isn't beautiful, it? responsive, um, and this kind of responsiveness, uh, you feel it throughout the whole pro the whole program. Um, if we go to the song mode here now, we can see like an overview which looks pretty much like most sort of DAWs. Um, and here's my MIDI clips, and I, if I double tap on something, it takes me into a into the piano roll editor and look, you know, can you see just how glossy and smooth that is? It's really nice. And I can, I can uh, touch on a note here and I can move those notes around or I can sort of change the length of them or move them up onto different notes. And it's all very responsive. I mean, I can, uh, if I do a double tap, it gives me, I can draw a box there and I can adjust a whole bunch of things simultaneously. Um, uh, double tap and for like a little zoom there. So um, lots of lots of nifty interface yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's on. an undo history. Uh, there's lots of stuff, you know, I mean, it really is, uh, it uses the, 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 the touchscreen paradigm very, very well. It's actually a lot of fun to work on because you feel like well, that, that's one of the things isn't it because you know we've seen applications where you you've got all these features that look great on paper and yes. then when you come to use them they're incredibly frustrating because yes. they're they're done with the sort of laptop or the deep desktop frame of mind and it yes. just doesn't it, it's, it's actually quite frustrating yeah and, and this is you know i mean just the fact you know let's say, say i'm tapping there i can go in i can just touch your notes you know it is the kind of touch screen idiom really working very very well indeed so uh, I noticed you loaded a project. Yeah. Let's have a listen then. <laughs> okay. So as the track's playing now, I can flick to the mixer and we've got a fully featured mixer here and we can have insert effects and uh, there are send effects as well. Um, and the great thing with this mixer is I can just, if I drop into record, is that uh, it's fully automatable. So, um, you know, it'll record all your fader moves. And, um, you know, which is the kind of functionality you'd expect off a modern day sort of DAW uh, workstation. Um, what about getting out the stuff out of there? I mean, obviously this is great and it's brilliant to work on headphones. I mean, I can testify, I created a couple of nice things that I've enjoyed as well. Sure. What about exporting it in, in and out? Okay, well, we go into this kind of fairly comprehensive manage page. Um, oh, look, there's, and it gives you the, the CPU usage and stuff. Very, like. very useful, because you don't know with these devices no, what's it's going a, on. It's a complete secret. It is it? a secret, yeah. So, I mean, if we push play now, let's have a look now. It's just jumping up 20, 23. 30%. Now, but let me just show you something. In the settings here, I've actually got my audio, my buffer latency set to very low. So uh, if I just stop that, and I'm just going to increase that to high. Let's push play now and have a little look. Um, it's okay. dropped it. So it's dropped by about 10, 12% really. Oh, so you yeah. can manage it, you know, yes. how you wish. Yeah, so you know, when you're actually playing it in, maybe change the buffer latency. Can you latency. freeze tracks? Uh, I'm, it doesn't no, have that, you know. no, because there isn't like an audio engine right. in there as such. Uh, however, I mean, I ha it has got SoundCloud uh, 
so if I had my if I had logged in with my SoundCloud, I could upload to SoundCloud. It just bounce an MP3, right? Uh, I mean, I, I, yes. Well, actually, this is one thing. If we look at the mix down option here, uh, unlike most of the other things, it actually is giving us format options, which is between Wave and uh, WAV files or OG. Yeah, which is OG is obviously an open open source version of a great MP3. format for a Welshman to choose. Og, I imagine. OG, 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 <laughs> indeed. Uh, or look at that. Zipped, zipped wow. wow. Ah, so you can just send your job there. Stuff. Yeah. And can you can you export the MIDI and sort of bring it into another door? Is there any opportunities for that kind of stuff? Yes, there is a uh, there's a side of this called NanoSync, and NanoSync has uh, there is an, an an application that you can run on your Mac and PC, and then that acts as uh, so so you can actually run this software as a free download for your Mac or PC, where so you can then bring your project into the computer, and then from the computer you can then do different things if you want to sort of uh, link that up with your your, your regular working environment. That reminds me, hasn't he done a version of Nano Studio standalone that runs for? Windows. Yes, that's people. what I mean. So ah, that's, okay, so yeah. there's actually a, a, a yeah, and that's what this Nano Sync can do. You see, uh, so you as can well. sync with the desktop version. Yes, yeah, and it gives you like a, an IP address where you can transfer those files across. When you get it, it has six tracks, um, right? And then there's an, an optional upgrade uh, uh, install right, that, you that you can increase it then to sixteen tracks, which I've done here. So um, what about sync options and those kind of things? I mean, does it synchronise? Has it got any of that whist or any anything no, else? No, no myth, no whist, and it doesn't seem to support the network session yet. I'm not sure. I haven't I haven't discovered that in there. There is, however, if you are connected via like the camera connection kit into the USB world of MIDI, then there is. Uh, quite comprehensive MIDI controller mappings uh, available. Oh yeah, so you can map right to, yeah. to hardware. Yeah, MIDI and it's well. got like a, like a MIDI learn mode there as well, which is, a, which is really nice to see. A uh, few other things that are worth mentioning. There is a bit of an undo history as well, which is cool. Um, you know, so when you're, when you're working in the song mode, you know, you can, um, if I was, let's just say, I was just to delete a bunch of things, um, you know, maybe copy a part, um, etc. you know. The undo history then. Ah, uh, so it lets there. you uh, <laughs> right. If you and you can see you can see the various stages of undo right. history. Again, these are the sort of things we would expect from a professional piece of software, and and this really does. Well, it may. I mean, because we're, this is an unfamiliar interface essentially to most of us, mm. you're going to make mistakes, aren't you? So something like that's quite handy. That's true. That's true. And uh, there's a built-in help as well. So um, ah, okay. You know, so. So does it, I mean does it integrate with other applications very much or is it more or less your sort of standalone thing? Can you run it alongside you know I don't know Morphwiz or or Animo no, or whatever? No, not I have not I haven't found a way to do that. But it does, however, though in the manage, uh, it, you know, if we were to mix down, one of the options is uh, uh, is to add to the pasteboard there. So it, it uh, the audio copy paste it works with that. That's right. right yeah. So uh, for instance, um, I mixed this down earlier, and if I come out of here and then open up uh, Loop. Which is very cool. Great app. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and then if um, and here it is. I've actually got it here. But I mean, you know, if I wanted to load it in again, I would press and hold, hit import, and the general pasteboard. There it is. So, um, so you can imagine now. I've got it in Loopy. I could actually, you know, um, I could overdub. Uh, well, I've, stuff. I can over the like, audio. Well, perhaps Loopy is something we can have a look at another one because I know I, that's just had a recent. It has had an update and it's got a uh, quite deep MIDI functionality now, so that's something that we should look at because a very cool piece of software as well. So Nano Studio is from Blip Interactive, a UK company. In fact, they're very local to here, so if I see them in town, I think I might offer to buy them a drink. Uh, you can get it from the iPads, uh, the iTunes Store. Uh, it's ten forty nine UK pounds, ninety ninety nine US dollars. How much is the add on that takes uh, it from six to? Yeah, yeah, two ninety nine to take. Two ninety nine UK pounds. So that yeah. would be around about four or five bucks. Yeah. Now, as is customary, um, we're going to try something a little bit different uh, to play us out with. Uh, what we've got here is uh, we've got this iPad, which is mine, which is running uh, Lima, which is coming out of the MIDI output of the uh, IO Dock mm -hmm. into uh, Gaz's iPad via the uh, Yamaha IMX One, and I'm going to attempt to control his uh, synthesizer on on a Nano Studio from mine while we play out. But before we go, we should just say thank you very much for watching. Uh, look forward to seeing you again. Uh, please do leave any more comments. Uh, we also always appreciate the comments. Uh, my name is Nick Bat, I'm editor of sonicstate.com and this is Gaz Williams, songsurgeon.co.uk. Mm. So, should we give it a go? Yes, try it. All right, switch to this shot here. Ready. Okay. Right, if you press play.
and I'll try, yeah.